Hey, y'all. Welcome to another episode of Balancing Life with Christ, the podcast. I'm so excited to be here with y'all tonight. I don't know why my mic seems so far away all of a sudden, but it did. Um, So I am back with my brother, Namir. Like we are here for our monthly rendition of just power that comes when we get together. I don't know what's going to happen tonight, but we do know one thing is that we are here to talk about alignment and talk about you being brave and God and child. Like so much has happened in these last month and a half, last six weeks, should I say, but God mm-hmm. is good and his grace has been sufficient. Can, listen, I just need y'all to start testifying on God about how great his grace is because I feel like we don't like boast on him enough. Like we are all going through, have been through, but God has kept us like, listen, we're still here. We are still here thriving in the beginning of 2022. It's been a year that feels like everything has come at us. I don't know about y'all, but it's been a blessing of a year, but it's also been like, what is this on the other side? It's like two, I'm walking down the street and one side is like, heavenly and one side is like oh y'all tripping but at the end of the day it depends on what I want to put my eyes on depends on how my day goes and there are days when I feel like I am being pulled in 20 different directions and going in a whirlwind but what I can declare is I know who calls forth peace in my storm I know who calls forth peace in my storm so I have faith today that I can like arise do everything that God's called me to do and just lay on my face when I need to and get up and work when I need to and listen I pray and I work I work and I pray on some Nehemiah type faith okay like child hallelujah I don't even know where this is going but God is good brother say hi to the people (laughs) what's going on y'all as you can tell God is moving already and things are on fire that's so I love what you said about everything that you said the way that you said it <laughs> yeah. It's been it's it's a heck of a year for us to just be in the first quarter and so much has transpired, so much has taken place, but everybody is running their race. Y'all hear me? Everybody is running their race. And I don't know what God is doing. I do know what God is doing, but God is reminding us that He's given us grace to stay in the lane. We're not going to the left, we're not veering to the right, but just staying in your lane. Don't merge. Don't even look over there. Don't even look over there, but stay in your lane. And don't you cause a car accident. Don't you cause a car crash. Be attentive on this road and hyper focus on what you're doing. It's, 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 it's that time where I can't look over here and I can't look over there because if I do, it's going to flip the whole thing over. Woo. There's glory in that. It'll flip the whole thing over, but you got to stay focused, stay anchored. You've been conditioned to run this race. You've been conditioned to run this race with God. God is coaching you. God is guiding you. God is leading you. You are going to get there safely, even if you feel like you started late. Even if you feel like you started late, you are still on time to get to your destination when God called you to be at your destination. It doesn't even matter if there was an accident. It doesn't even matter if there was an incident that took place on your way there. If there was a roadblock, if there was something that happened or transpired, car accidents, you're still going to get there safely because God's hand is on you. If you ever doubted it before, you don't need to doubt it now because you know that there is a time and a place for everything beneath the heavens. This is your time. It is your turn. It's time for you to bet on yourself. It's time to believe in yourself. It's time to say that if God is sending me, I need to go and see what God has for me. It's time that you stop being on the back burner and it's time to put your best foot forward. And you say, I may not run to my destination, but I'm going to walk step in front of step, foot in front of foot, step by step, bit by bit, moment by moment, second by second. I may get winded, but guess what I'm going to do? Catch my breath. I feel somebody catching their breath. I feel somebody catching their breath. I feel somebody catching their breath. I feel somebody saying it was hard. That last quarter was hard. That last quarter was hard. You went into overtime. You didn't even recognize that you were in overtime. But guess what? Five minutes on the clock. It's still enough time for you to flip that Let's thing. Go. It's still enough time for you to flip the script. It's still enough time for you to show up and show out and show people who your God is, who your team represents, and who you are rocking with. You have the best starting five. 
You have the best starting five with you and the Holy Spirit, God and Jesus, they're not going nowhere but with you. They ain't going nowhere but with you. And then God has already positioned the right people alongside of you to walk with you. And I, I, I just feel like somebody needs to know that even if the people that you wanted to go with, you can't go with you. I need you to honor their time. I need you to honor their time. I need you to pay them their fees, give them their due diligence. Bless you for being with me. Thank you for shooting in the gym as long as you did. Thank you for being my sparring partner. You can't go with me to where I'm about to go because I have to go by myself. You can't go with me because it's a me and God type of thing. I wanted everybody to go, but I didn't recognize that God really wanted me to be alone because when I'm alone, God will give me clarity. When I'm alone, God will give me strength. When I'm alone, he will speak to me. Elisha was in the cave. Elijah was in the cave by himself. When the spirit of the Lord manifested, not in the earthquake, not in the fire, not in the wind, but it was in the voice of a whisper. God wants to whisper to me and give me a newfound level of clarity. I don't have to wonder where I'm going. I don't have to wonder who's going. All I know is if that is God is going before me, whether it's a cloud or whether it's a pillar of fire, guess what? He's lighting my path and this path is secured by Christ. So can't nobody take my seat. Ooh, hallelujah. Somebody needs to know that. Can't nobody take your seat. Can't nobody shut the door. Can't nobody try to overwork you. Can't nobody try to haggle you or bargain you down. Your seat is reserved and God has need of you. Your number is being called right now. Your number is being called right now. You about to exit the waiting room because you are right on time for your appointment. That's all I'm going to say. 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 You are right on time for your appointment. Paging so-and-so, God has need for you. Paging so and so, God has need of you. Feel the Holy Spirit beckoning you to step out on faith. It's time to get going. It's time to get moving. You might have been exhausted. You might have been wounded. You might have been hurt. They may have lied on you. They may have cheated on you. They may have been toxic to you, but don't you count it. Don't you count it against them. Don't let it get to you or discourage you. Remember this, you're suffering for a reason. Hallelujah. And if you're suffering for Jesus, guess what he'll do? Make it worth it. Guess what he'll do? Make it worth it so that God will account for your suffering. That what you go through privately, God will reward you publicly. Keep on going. Keep on going, remembering that you are being conformed to the image of Christ. So I may be suffering now. You might see a little blood, but guess what? I'm looking a little bit more like Jesus. I may have some scars right here, but guess what I'm doing? I'm looking more like Jesus. They may have talked about me and said I would never be, but guess what I'm doing by enduring it anyway, not cussing them out, but operating in self-control. I'm looking a little bit more like Jesus and God is rewarding my faith because of my diligence, my self-control, my hyper-focus, my love for the Lord and my mission. I'm on a mission, y'all. I'm on a mission. You are on a mission in 2022. This will not be the year like any other year. This is the year where you step up, you step out and you be what God called you to be you're not waiting for them to do it. You're not waiting for people to show up first. You show up. huh? You show up. Get out that boat of familiarity like Peter did. Don't you wait for another disciple. Don't you wait to get your plate. You go to the line first. Fight for your spot. That's it. Fight for your spot. Jesus. 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 <laughs> Why you always want to come on my podcast and show out? <laughs> yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Listen, if you don't feel inspired in this moment to go out and do what God has called you to do, I don't know what's going to do it for you. I, I just don't. That's so good. That's so good. That's so good. So I'm hearing God say, um, talk to my people about faith. Um, so as I mentioned in the beginning, just, so, just so we're clear, just so we're all together, this uh, episode is about alignment. Okay. So getting in alignment with God, being where he wants you to be doing what he wants you to do, believing what he wants you to believe ultimately so that you can be brave and make impact in his kingdom. Okay. Like, and when I say make impact in his kingdom right now, like the things that God's been revealing to me and showing me is just how much the dark side is trying to prevail and win. We did an episode, a couple of, I don't know, it was in the beginning of January or something like that around culture versus God. And right now, everybody wants you to think that you're uncertain about your future. 
that you don't know where you're going, that in, in that insert in, in that uncertainty that you need psychics, that you need astrology, that you need to come into agreement with witchcraft, that you need to be constantly seeking the the man-made information about where you're going next. And today I want to just realign you with the fact that God has already given you your destiny. He's already told you what direction you're going in. And if we're still long enough, we will come back into alignment with who God has called us to be, what he's instructed us to do. Most of you know, most of you already, if I asked you right now, what has God called you to do? I waited because I know you, you're answering me right now. And you can say it out loud, but you start to, as soon as you say it, you draw back in doubt. You draw back in doubt because you're wondering, just like Moses, if you have the skills, right? The actual skills. Can I talk good enough? Do I have the education? Do I have the background? Am I able to be who God's called me to be? So doubt starts to creep in the insecurity. Then you start to ask questions like, well, God, do you really mean me? Well, how do I know this is you talking to me, God? So then God sets the bush on fire and then God gives you a stick to throw down and God gives you all these things and you are now wavering in faith and letting doubt win. I had an opportunity to talk to this gentleman and he was so clear. He was so clear on what God had called him to do. And, you know, he was telling me his testimony about how God had told him to do X and God had told him to do Y and how he did it and how it bared fruit for him. And this next assignment God had given him, of course, required a new level of faith. And I said, so what has God called you to do? And his response was, of course, the last before last assignment. And he said, but I already did that. And I said, uh-huh. And I waited because I already know if you just wait a little bit longer, the answer will come out. He said, oh, you want me to be honest? I said, of course I want you to be honest. And so he goes to proceed to tell me the next step that God had given him. But that next step required a financial sacrifice, right? He was going to have to leave his good job in order to proceed. And in that fear crept in. And I said, so now I'm hearing you talking fear when your trail of obedience tells me that you're a man of faith. So who are we agreeing with today? And so today I just want to say this to you, because somebody right now you're hearing this and you're like, you're breathing hard and you're sucking your teeth because I'm in your neighborhood. And that's okay. I'm with you. Okay. And what I'm saying to you is this, that this season is about boldness. And this season is about the boldness and not in who we are, but in who our God is. And it's okay if you're not sure who God is to you. But it, this is a time where you get to try him out. And they, what's the scripture say? Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see. Okay. Because as we step out on faith, God is going to show us how to trust him, how to hear him more clearly, um, how to believe in the promise, how to war for the promise. Okay. Because a level of faith requires an element of a fight. You have to be willing to contend. And when I say contend it means just to pray for, to speak over yourself, to continue to believe when life does not add up, when the math's not math. And when God told you that he was going to make you a millionaire, but you over here with $2 in your bank account and it's about to go negative tomorrow when this bill come through. Like, are you going to continue to believe? So faith, like, do you have faith enough to believe that your God one speaks to you, that he speaks to you through his word, that he speaks to you through your dreams, that he speaks to you through other people that are not in this occult world. Do you believe that you can wait the distance? And that God won't forget about you. Have you, are you, have you come into agreement with the thought that God's forgotten? And I have to ask these questions because these are the things that sow seeds of doubt in us and fear in us that hinder us from staying in alignment with God and moving forward because we think he's forgotten. So we step to the left and we say, well, let me go see what this other God's talking about. And we don't even think that it's another God because culture has told us that it's this is, this is it. This is what we doing. Our ancestors was doing this and you know, all this other good jazz. 
the sis. But bro, I'm gonna tell you right now, don't go over there messing around with them people, as they would say on Friday. Like, don't go around there messing around with them folks. Like, you need to stay right here with God and trust that He's going to see you through. And I what I love is that um I it's just this recalls me back to a testimony that Tyler Perry shared when he was going through his journey of faith. And God told him to write these screenplays. And he said the day that he was in his dressing room and he was like going off on God, like you told me that this was the way I'm supposed to go. Like I didn't spend my last dollars. Like I've been homeless out here trying to do this for you, all this. And God said, look out the window. And when he looked out the window, there was a line of people showing up for his play. And the line was literally wrapped around the corner. After several times he's done these plays and no one showed up, he's been obedient and it yielded no results. But on that last time, before the big time, everybody showed up. And so it's staying patient and knowing that sometimes we have to risk it all, but it's worth it because God says a man that wants to hold on to his life will lose his life. But a man that's willing to give his life up will gain it all. So what are you willing to gain? What are you willing to gain that doesn't require you to sell your soul to this world? That got serious. But... Oh, because conviction. Because it's true. Everybody, everybody wants success. Everybody wants to be wealthy. Everybody, nobody wants to work for nobody. Um, everybody wants to be an influencer and a person of faith and a picture of faith. But when you're going through the valley and you spend months in the valley <laughs> and the water has dried up and God has told you to stay in the valley, what are you going to do? What does your prayer life look like? How does, what does faith look like to you? Elijah, I remember if it was Elijah, Elijah was in, when they were in a drought, he sent, God sent provision to the raven. It was bread. Elijah. There you go. Mm -hmm. He said water through a raven. It was it was very desperate, but God showed his hand upon his life and he saw miracles take place. And it's so challenging to be brave for God because there's so much resistance. There's so much rebellion. And we often see a lot of resistance at first. It, you might be it might be the first time you've actually taken a step of faith. You, you're met with all this resistance and this pushback. And you're like, whoa. You think that it is an indicator that you should be doing something of the complete opposite. But in actuality, what that is doing is highlighting that there's an actual need for you to go that direction. If everybody's trying to dissuade you from going this way, then God and God is you continue to feel this desire in your heart and in your spirit and the pull to go this way, no matter what they say, you have need <laughs> to be over there. And God is calling you to be over there. The same thing I'm reminded of Gideon. Gideon was putting his wine, he was threshing wheat in the wine press, not publicly for everybody to see. He was behind the tree minding his business and praying and talking to the Lord, like, you know, like, I can't believe this, the God of my ancestors, and we have to go through all of this, this hoopla and with being bullied and discriminated against from this other race of people because we made some bad decisions and we're not able to be free. Where is the God of my ancestors? Huh? You might be right there saying, where is the God of my ancestors? The God that has made people like T.D. Jakes and all these other people influential and wealthy. Where is that God? Why am I not experiencing that God today when I'm tired of being at this nine to five, barely making ends meet? Where is that God? And then you have an encounter with the Lord and maybe God sends an angel. Maybe it's not a physical angel, but maybe God sends a stranger or a friend or a family member to call you by your name. Not how you see yourself, but how God sees yourself. Huh? How God sees you, mighty warrior. Who? Speaker. What? Author. Huh? Business owner. What you say? That ain't me. I can't, I can't do none of that. And God is trying to call you out of familiarity into a territory where he's already paid for your plot of land. Already paid for your plot of land and secured a job for your future. But if you're not going to go, what are we doing? What's the point? And the thing about the thing about having faith and God making us brave is you're not gonna you're not gonna have all the answers. It's a scary deal. You don't require faith if you can see your way. But the fact that you take that step, being blindfolded, and you choose to follow him anyway, and you learn faith as you go and let God strengthen you. I think the crazy thing about Gideon's story 
is that we saw this man who was timid, fearful, and shy. And initially, he talked to God, got his confirmation. It was like, all right, God, if you're serious, now if you're really serious, okay, let me put this fleece out here. Let me see what you're talking about. If you do this, then I know without a shadow of doubt you're going to do it. So God gave him instructions. We see that God fulfilled the promise and gave him the confirmation, like, this is what I want you to do. So immediately, Gideon was like, oh, see, okay, so I'm going to do it, but I'm not going to do it during the day. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to dismantle this altar when everybody can see me because I don't want no problems. So he chose to do it at night, which is nothing wrong with that. Not even though he was timid and anxious and a little bit fearful strategy, right? Because God will give you strategy even if you may have anxiety. Oh, my God. God will give you strategy even if you wrestle with anxiety. God knows. God knows you better than you know yourself. And Gideon took the group of men. They dismantled the altar. And he thought he was in the clear. And that's all God wanted him to do. But sure enough, immediately after they did that dismantle the altar, the next thing they saw was the pushback of all the men and people in the village trying to overtake them and saying, bring him out here. He deserves to die. And his, to his surprise, who defended him? His father. His father defended his position and said, you know, if Baal is a real guy, let him fight for himself. You don't have to bring Gideon out here. Let him defend himself. And the crazy thing about it is God will send people to defend you, to be your advocate as you're building up your confidence. I don't hear nobody. God has already sent and positioned people to advocate for you while you're still figuring out who you are and who God is calling you to be. And surely after we see that transpire with his father defending him and giving him a new name, Slayer Baal, we see that Gideon starts rallying the troops and that God is leading him to deliver a nation of people not with 30,000, but with 300. God said, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it with all these people because the people are going to think they did it themselves. God was like, I want to do it with less. Uh, look at somebody say, simplify. Simplify. God said, I want to do it with less. I don't want, I don't want you to write stories and, 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 and do screenplays. I want you to simplify. Tyler Perry, simplify. Hallelujah. I feel something. God, God had Gideon simplify the men so God can move upon his glory upon the man to deliver them into total victory. And as you're simplifying and stripping things away, you'll find out the real essence of who you are. And that'll inform your faith, that'll inform what God has called you to do, and that will strengthen your confidence. And you will start recognizing that God actually did call me to do this. I don't, I don't only just do this, but I, the scripture says I'm more than a conqueror. So what do I do? I go above and beyond. So I don't just do it well, but I do it well and then some. There's leftovers. Huh? Like, that's what God has called you to do, to focus. God will make you brave to do the task. Go ahead, Kimberly. I'm just shaking my head because it's good. This is good. This is good. This is good. So I just want to give y'all scripture reference real quick. So Gideon, the stories in Judges 6 through 8, so you can find it there. And then um, Elijah's story, the one that he's talking about with the raven, is in 1 Kings 17. So first Kings 17 and Judges 6 through 8. But I love what you're saying because exactly what Gideon did. Gideon was a man that he knew who God was, but he needed to go through the process of learning what it meant to trust God. And that's where a lot of us are right now. It's like, God, I know who you are. I love you. I pray every day. I worship every day. Like it may not be every day, but it's frequently enough, you know, consistent with some consistency. And you're like, I, I know you, God, but now you're calling me to a deeper place and you're calling me to a bigger assignment. And I'm not really sure like what this is and what is required and how to go about it. And am I going to get persecuted for this? And um, like, you know, just how do I go about doing it? And what I love is Gideon's story. So go back and read that because it really shows you that sometimes in the very beginning of your journey, you're going to have to ask God you know, for that sign, you're going to be like, God, like, is this you? Like, I need to know, like, legit before I step out here, like, are we doing this together? But then we see Gideon shift from a place of needing confirmation to being bold. So as God told him to cut down the number of, of um, men to go to war with, he obeyed and he proceeded forward and he did what he needed to do and was successful. And so it's like, it's okay if in the beginning you you have childlike faith. Childlike faith is that faith that goes to the father. It's like, I want to go, but I need you to hold my hand. I want to go, but I'm a little scared. I want to go, but I'm not sure what this is supposed to look like. I want to go, but will you jump in the pool with me? 
And what does a good father do? They coach you through, they talk you through, they send you someone, they talk to you in prayer, like God's going to show up for you. But then there comes a point where there's that transference was like, okay, well, you, when you were a child, I spoke to you like a child, or, you know, even though the Bible scripture says when I was a child, I spoke like a child, but God speaks to us in ways that are like, okay, you're, you're immature in faith. So let me get you to a place of maturation. And then once you're there, there's a higher level of expectation. For instance, we look at Abraham, right? He believed God long enough for the promise, but initially it started off with God coaching him through it. So it was leave your people. And then once he left his people, let me show you the stars in the sky. Then he was like, okay, remember that promise I gave you? I'm going to put you to sleep and I'm going to show it to you again. And then, right, Abraham got impatient, had had Ishmael with Hagar, but God still is a God of his promise. It's still a God of his word. So he gave him Isaac. But then at that point, we see that when he told him to sacrifice Isaac on the altar, there was no delay. We didn't see him talking back and forth. We didn't see any laughter. We didn't see any fight because he had matured in faith enough to know that he could trust God, that he could believe God. And so I don't know where you are in your faith journey, but I have to ask you, like, are you in the infancy phase where you need the God to reassure you along the journey? Are you in the middle where you're just waiting on God, where God has you in a place of waiting and character development? And he's trying to strengthen you to understand that everything at God's pace is not fast. Everything at God's pace isn't fast. Why? Because our God likes to lay a solid foundation. He likes to lay a firm foundation. So whereas when you get something, you can keep it. When you get something, you can prevail in it with experience. When you get something that you're in a different place in a mindset, right? And so then are, are you at the place where you're now to a place where God's asking you to have a bold, radical, obedient faith that will cost you everything, but is the most biggest reward that you'll ever receive. And if you're at that place, it can be scary. But let me tell you, this is where you need that Hall of Fame experience with God, where you go back and you literally spend a day in worship and you're writing down all the ways God's made, all the times you, you know, you just ask him to bring stuff to your remembrance so that he can show you the trail of obedience that you've had and also show you the trail of faith, his faithfulness that has occurred. So that when you look forward, you can say with all certainty, I know my God will come through. Yes. Yes. And yes. And I love, I love what you said about that and writing that down and just remembering. And I think something that we don't, we seldomly do, but if you do, it's powerful. I think you should also take a step back and reevaluate the God that you serve. You serve the God of your ancestors. You serve the God of your ancestors. Sometimes we're so we're so close to our story, we're desensitized to the power of it. We fail to recognize that not only did you believe God to be true and evident, but your maybe it was your mother, maybe it's not anybody that you know, but your ancestors. And for those of us just one across the board, we serve an ancestral kind of God where God from different generations, people have submitted to, he has receipts. Great, 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 so-and-so, they prayed. They prayed, they prayed, they prayed, they prayed for breakthrough. And even in the, in the month of Black History Month and a whole bunch of other things, we have seen those people pray for breakthrough, praying for world change, allowing their faith to provoke them to action, to create world change that we're living into this day. We're the byproducts of their prayers. And we serve that kind of God who heard their prayer and brought about the change. And sometimes it's just a matter of remembering where you come from, <laughs> remembering whose you are and who believes who you believe in. I'll say it that way. Remembering who you are, whose you are, and who you believe in. We serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God that is the living God of the heaven and the earth, the waters and the seas and everything. There is no universe. There is the creator of the universe. We serve that kind of God who has authority and clarity. And no matter how people perceive you, if God is with you, you are going to be just fine. You don't need to go to a psychic or a witch or this or that. You don't have to be even, and I'll even say this too, you don't even have to be discouraged when you see other people prospering, prospering in something that you desire to do. Maybe it is that God has called you to do something, but you've experienced pushback 
And maybe you're around people or you see people who are doing the complete opposite that are more successful, more wealthy. They're living an ideal life. And you wonder, like, is all of my suffering in vain? Am I doing this in vain? The scripture says, I believe it's in Psalm 73, that the, the writer felt the same exact thing. But they said, when I entered into the house of the Lord, it became clear to me that they have their destination, that they have a demise. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For what you're doing today, you have to give an account to God. And guess what? They may be living it up over here, but they have to give an account to God for all of that. Hallelujah. But by you surrendering now, you could experience heaven on earth. You could live your best life, your blessed life. And no matter what people perceive you to be, you know the truth of this thing that God created you for a purpose, for intentionality, and to accomplish such a thing. And I think one more thing that's powerful about Gideon's story is there comes a point where they're getting ready to besiege the enemy camp. And he's looking for more confirmation. And to that point, too, no matter if you feel like you're the most seasoned saint or if you feel like you're in the infancy state, we all go through reoccurring seasons where God has to remind us of who he is as a father, as a friend, as a confidant, as a this or that, as well as expose us to different sides of himself. But one of the people, one of the instructions God gives is to go up on the mountain and for them to eavesdrop on the conversation that they have. So they go up on the mountain and what they hear is that one of the soldiers said, I had a dream there was a, 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 a loaf of barley bread and it rolled and it hit the tent and then the tent fell over. I don't know what that means. And then the other person responded, that means that surely the son of, um, I forget Gideon's dad's name, God has delivered us into his hand, being his adversary. God is already talking to your enemies about you being problematic. And God has already graced you to overtake them. And God is allowing their conversation, their little chit chat, their little impromptu planning meeting to be an encouragement to you that God has already given them over to your hand. So you will be successful. You will be successful. God believes in you. Your enemies are scared of you and they're trying to intimidate you. And all it takes is a matter of you recognizing who you are and that God has called you to do something spectacular. Amen, amen, amen. And I even want to say, Namir, because I'm I just heard somebody saying, like, well, nobody in my family that I know is saved. And so when you said that, you know, God is a God of the ancestors, it made me think about Ruth, right? Ruth came from a a tribe that did not believe in God. And, you know, quite honestly, like he didn't even want the Israelites intermarrying with this particular tribe. I can't remember if she was a Moabite or not. Like I don't I don't want to yes, say she's that. A Moabite. Okay, thank you. So she was a Moabite. And so she didn't have anybody in her lineage that believed in the Most High God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the, you know, um, just Yahweh. Like that wasn't her, that wasn't her background. But what she did was she was connected with a woman who knew the Lord and her background spoke for Ruth in that way. So she saw Naomi's faithfulness to God and her commitment. And as a result, she lined up with her. She said, I want to come and serve you and your God was what was said. And as a result of that, it shifted uh, Ruth's life to the point that now she's in the lineage of Jesus Christ. So I just want to encourage you, that person who said, well, my family's my, not saved. I'm the first one saved in my family. So I don't have that lineage of uh, testimony of people before me that may have worshiped and prayed. You may not know anybody in that uh, category, but what you do know is that you have community and you have that one soul that's like been committed, has been down, and it's the faithfulness of that has been a, an encouragement to you. So even reflect on that person's journey and let that also speak to the testament of who God is and the faithfulness of the Father. And so um, I just want to say a prayer for us as we transition out. Brother, is there anything else you want to add before we, uh, before I pray? Um, I think everything that Kimberly said and that Ruth was willing to let go of her former life to experience the life she never had. And that was not a pretty experience having been a widow and leaving everything that she knew being her homeland. That's like leaving America to move to Africa and live there permanently. You don't know nothing about it, but you know this one connection through this one relationship, everything is everything that I need, I can receive it from here. It's the same way for knowing Jesus. And she took a leap of faith. And by her taking a leap of faith to go with Naomi, not only did she meet her husband, but God ordained as such that she 
is a part of the lineage that birthed Jesus. And she's remembered historically for a simple act of faith. So it may seem scary. You may not understand where you're going. You may not recognize why the Lord sent you this way. But understand this, that if God is for you, God knows the plans that he thinks towards you. And that God is not God's desire to make you suffer. It's not God's desire to punish you. God is actually a caring father. And I don't want my children to suffer. Even if I have to whoop you, what I want you to do is to do better. Mm -hmm. And I don't mind disciplining you if it will help you develop character, if it will help break some of those habits and giving you certain boundaries and perspectives and even ideals on how you see yourself, how you should see people and how you should interact with other human beings. Because what I want all in all is not that you should depend on anybody, but I want you to be firm in your identity and recognize how you can help your neighbor. I want you to be a good, solid human being. And I want to know that you can go out in this world and be successful regardless of how other people treat you because you have an understanding of who you are and whose you are and where you came from. So it may be hard, it may be scary, but recognize that if you are a believer and you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, the same resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead, that same power which manifests itself in the relationship and the triune being of God, hallelujah, and this Holy Spirit, it lives inside of me. And so me and Kimberly could talk to you till we're blue in the face and we, we can encourage you to be brave. We can encourage you to be courageous and to be bold. But there's one inside of you that is able to strengthen you. The scripture says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. The Holy Spirit can give you the gift of bravery. The Holy Spirit can give you the gift of courage. The Holy Spirit can make you bold when you feel fearful on the inside. The Holy Spirit is where you see manifest on people. And they may be introverted by nature, but they have extroverted moments where God gets glory. It is the Holy Spirit working inside of you. And you don't have to be afraid to engage the Holy Spirit and have a conversation because God desires to connect with you because now you too have a privilege that your ancestors didn't have. Hallelujah. Through Jesus, you get to have the Holy Spirit inside of you. You don't get to just experience God from a distance or not being able to go into a temple for fear of being killed. But Jesus literally died for you so you could be reconciled to God and so that Christ's spirit could dwell within you. So we actually have, that's our superpower. The Holy Spirit is our superpower. He's our best friend. He's our superpower. He's our strength. He's our confident. When you feel like cussing people as the Holy Spirit, it's just and you say, ooh, I did that differently. It's the Holy Spirit living inside of us. So I'm just encouraging you that whatever you need, God has for you. And recognize even when you're going through these transitions and you're afraid, ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, give me strength. Holy Spirit, give me courage. Holy Spirit, make me brave. Holy Spirit, help me to trust God. I don't know how to do it. Holy Spirit, I don't know. Show me and be surprised at the advocate and the teacher who will help you. This is the greatest gift that God left us. Jesus said, if I do not, if I do not leave, he cannot come. If Jesus were to stay, you would miss out on this great gift. Don't forget the gift. Access the Holy Spirit. It's the best relationship you could ever have. And you need him as you continue to make these transitions because God is calling you deeper. But you also have to have a stronger connection and, and go further in his word, further in intimacy and further in relationship with his presence. But yeah. Amen. 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 What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend yes, we have in Jesus. He is our faithful, 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 faithful friend. And he's left us this advocate to say that when I left you, I didn't leave you alone, but I left you with someone who has immediate access to me, who intercedes on your behalf. So we have everything that we need through God, our father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, and we don't need anything else. And I think what is so hard at times about the Christian faith is that this is a faith that requires patience. This is a, a journey with God that requires us to rest in Him and be patient in the development, be patient in the results, be patient in the hearing. That's why patience is one of the fruits of the spirit. And so I want to encourage you not to think that you've been forgotten because you're being taught how to be patient. Um, because you may not hear as quickly 
as you like. You may not get the response as quickly as you like. You may not get the result as quickly as you like, but God is moving and God shall not be mocked. And he is a God of suddenly. Um, when I think about the lepers in, in, uh, in, in Second Kings, that when the um, the city was without food, they went through another famine, and the leper said, let's go into the city lest we die. Elijah, Elisha had already prophesied that it was going to be a release of food by this time tomorrow. And because the lepers knew that they could either starve outside the city or be killed inside the city, they went. And as a result, they found plunder because the enemy's camp heard a mighty army coming and shifted everything. So when people were went in lack to where they were wanting to eat each other's children, the next day they had enough food that everything was selling for pennies on the dollar. And so just know that God can be a God of sudden shifts. But just know that there's also a journey and a process. And so success does not come overnight. And those people who get success overnight, oftentimes they're not getting it from the right place. And you have to ask yourself, is it worth the turmoil that the temporary success brings? Because at the end of the day, the enemy is going to want you to pray, pay a price for what it is that he's given you. Um, and the beauty is that God has us pay that price up front through character development. OK, um, so the suffering that we go through is that of encouraging ourselves to be better. So I know we need to close this down. So I am going to read this scripture and then pray for you all because I'm going to come out of Acts 4. And this is when the um, disciples and some individuals got together to pray for courage because they were going through a period of time when persecution was starting to increase and they just needed the Holy Spirit to give them a new level of something. And so let's go to Acts 4, 23, and I am going to attempt to read it as fast as possible um, because it is so much. Um, Acts 23 through verse um, 31, and it reads, As soon as they were freed, Peter and John returned to the other believers and told them what the leading priest elders had said. When they heard the report, all of the believers lifted their voice together in prayer. So get together with some folks who are going to pray with you. O sovereign Lord, creator of heaven and earth, this um, creator of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, you spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through the ancestor David, your servant, saying, Why were the nations so angry? Why did they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepared for battle. The rulers gathered together against the Lord, against his Messiah. Verse 27. In fact, this has happened here in this very city for Herod Apotus and Pontius Pilate, the governor, the Gentiles and the people of Israel were all united against Jesus, your holy servant, whom you anointed. But everything they did was determined beforehand according to your will. So sometimes people are gathering against you. It's not because you've done anything wrong. It's because God has put it in the will that the people will come up against you for his purpose and his plan. Verse 29. And now, O Lord, hear their threats and give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May, si may miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Verse 31. After this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. So, Father, I just come today, first and foremost, asking for forgiveness for any and all pride that we've just exuded, Father, by thinking that our plans were better than your plans, that our ways were higher than your ways, God, when we know the opposite to be true. Father, I pray that you forgive us, Lord, when we desire fortune and fame over our commitment honor and obedience to you. Father, I lay our desires down at your feet that we not let this microwave society and this microwave world cause us to step out of alignment with you. Father, I ask for divine peace, divine wisdom, divine strategy to rest upon your children in this moment, that they will come boldly and fully and completely in alignment with you, trusting your faith, God, Trusting you in faith, and but trusting your grace, your grace to fill the gaps of those skills that they think that they don't, that they don't have, the resources that are missing, 
in the missing puzzle pieces of the knowledge and the information that they need. Father, I thank you that you are indeed our most high king, that you are our holy God, and that there's no one like you in all the earth. I thank you, Lord, that there's no one righteous like you. There's no one holy like you. There's no one sacred like you, that you are indeed a master of our lives and you have the key to unlock all wisdom all knowledge and all power. So Father, I pray for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon your children today, that we will rest in the boldness in the spirit of the Lord to lead us and guide us to direct our path, to order our steps, that we would come out of agreement with Baal and that we would only honor you in spirit and in truth, believing you to lead our way, to pave our path, God. And most importantly, Lord, make our names great and make us successful in your way and in your time. Father, I thank you. I thank you that our timing is in your hands. I thank you, God, that you are indeed, like I said, the master of our plans. You say that the steps of the righteous are ordered. God, I thank you that the plans of the of the righteous shall succeed. God, I thank you Lord, as we commit ourselves to you, that everything our hands touch shall be blessed. God, I thank you, Lord, that we will be the head and not the tail above and not beneath. God, I thank you, Lord, that we can't even begin to imagine the things that you have promised and planned for us. God, I thank you, Lord that your your promise to us are sure that they are yes and amen. I thank you, Lord, that your word does not return to you void, God. I thank you, Lord, that all things are working together for our good, Father. God, I thank you that as we just sit here and intercede, God, that you're moving, that you're shifting, that you're making things come into alignment, God. Father, I call everything that's out of sync to come into divine alignment even now, God. Every spirit of delay that has been... um released upon your children, they'd be canceled now in the name of Jesus and that your divine timing would be called back to record, God, be called back to remembrance, Father, and that it shall be what prevails, God, that your word, Lord, that you will pull out the book of remembrance, God, that you will remember their prayers, that you'll remember their fasting, that you'll remember their tears, that you'll remember their suffering, God, and that you, Lord, will call forth that which shall be done in this season and this hour. God, I thank you for fresh anointing. I thank you, God, for the fresh travail that you're placing in the spirit of the intercessors, God, that we would just declare in faith that this world belongs to you, God, and that your children, Lord, shall not be caught up in the traps and the snares of the enemy, but through our worship, through our reading, through our prayers, that we shall be set free. God, declare and decree a fresh anointing for prayer, a fresh anointing for intercession, a fresh anointing, God, to call upon your name, to seek your face first in everything, God. I thank you, Lord, for wisdom, God. I pray. Pray, God, that we not uh, fall into the spirit of pride. I think that we can do it without you, God. I pray, Lord, that your justice continue to prevail. Lord, have your way. Have your way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Well, y'all be blessed. And um, I hope this spoke to you. I hope this resonated with you. And if you need anything, you know where to reach me. Podcast at BLWC. 21. Until next time, move and operate in faith and faith alone. In Jesus' name, have a good day. See you.